Gaming has come a long way in the last 30 years or more. The realism has been ramped up through sophisticated graphics, surround sound, physics algorithms, and of course, online multiplayer games let us play against real people instead of the computer. But a lot of us old timers, I guess you'd say, remember the 80s and 90s when there was a much greater variety of games available. Back then, developing a game was quicker and cheaper, so publishers took a chance. Whereas today, due to the huge sums of money involved, they want guaranteed returns, which sometimes feels like 90% of gaming is first person shooters or isometric MOBAs. Even Tomb Raider and city simulators like these are simply glossier versions of gaming experiences that began in the 90s. Not only is originality lacking, but the time you need to invest in a game these days is considerable. What happened to firing up a game for some quick, light-hearted fun instead of having to find hours of time for some campaign or other? And what about seeing a completely different genre for the first time? You could argue that platformers were overdone back then with Mario, Sonic and hundreds of others. But the 90s also saw the birth of great fighting games which were a blast to play with your buddies, as were racing games like Wipeout which had some of the best soundtracks of any game before or since. We also had adventure games like Monkey Island which had an engaging combination of humour and storytelling and real innovative gameplay from the likes of Lemmings, not to mention all the independent coders in bedrooms all over the country would come up with new ideas like this snow piling game where you have to clear your snow and sabotage your opponent's attempt to clear theirs. Maybe you're like me and you miss those games. Or maybe you weren't even born back then and never had a chance to play them, and as a keen gamer you're curious what all the fuss was about. There's no need to go hunting around for several consoles, all the footage I just showed you was recorded from software emulators running on a cheap Raspberry Pi computer, and getting it all up and running is surprisingly easy. I gave a quick intro to the Raspberry Pi in my previous video here, so if you want to know more about the specs I encourage you to watch that. But otherwise, just know that you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 2B, which is just $35, a case of some sort, these come in several styles from $5 upwards, a quality 2 amp USB charger with a micro USB connector, a decent sized class 10 micro SD card, I'm using a 32 gigabyte one because some PlayStation ROMs can be pretty big, one or ideally two USB gamepads. I'm using these Logitech F310s which work really well with Emulation Station which is the software that runs on the Pi, but you can use Xbox controllers or even PC gamepads. You'll also need a USB keyboard just for the initial setup, an Ethernet cable so you can connect it to your network or a USB Wi-Fi dongle, and of course a HDMI cable to connect it all up to your TV. So when you browse head over to Google, search for RetroPie, go to the site, you want to choose Downloads. They offer images for the Raspberry Pi 1 and Pi 0, but I recommend a Pi 2B for its combination of CPU power and plentiful USB ports. If you want to install multiple OS's on a single SD card for dual booting, you can use Berry Boot, but I'm using a fresh card for my console, so I'll download the standalone version. The link to the installation instructions will also allow us to download some software to burn the image to our SD card. For Windows, they recommend Win32 Disk Imager, and on the Mac, I can definitely recommend Apple Pie Baker. I'm on my PC at the moment, so I'll download the Windows version. Once you've installed the SD card burning software, open it up and select the RetroPie disk image we downloaded earlier. Ensure your SD card is in your card reader, and then press Write. After warning us that we're about to wipe everything on the card, we just need to wait a few minutes for the process to complete. Put the card in the Pi and hook up all the connections plugging the power into the wall last, as the Pi will boot as soon as it gets power, and you want everything plugged in when it does. On first boot, the Pi will resize the disk partition on the SD card to make use of all the space available, and then reboot. The first thing you need to do is configure the controller for emulation station. Hold down any button on your first gamepad and it will try and identify the controller you have. Then simply follow the directions and press the button or move the stick for each control in turn. If your gamepad doesn't have that particular control in question, hold down any unused button to skip configuring that one. Now do the same for the second controller. Using either the controller or the arrow keys on your keyboard, scroll over to the RetroPie section and select it by pressing enter. If you need to configure your Wi-Fi settings, you can do so here. Once done, or if you're using a wired collection like I am, scroll to the bottom to show IP address, as we need to know this to copy our game ROMs over to the Pi. You can do it with a USB stick, but I find this method to be the most convenient. On your PC or Mac, simply browse to the Pi on your network by entering double backslash followed by the IP address of the Pi. Browse to the ROMs folder where you'll find folders for every game's console the Pi can emulate. All we need to do is copy our ROM files into the appropriate folders.
I'll use Sonic on the Mega Drive as the example here. Sorry, Genesis, as it was known in the US. Then you need to restart Emulation Station on the Pi by pressing Start on your controller and choosing the appropriate option. You have to do this whenever you add new ROMs so the Pi can re-index them. Then scroll over to the appropriate emulator, in this case the Mega Drive or Genesis, select the game, and you're good to go. At any time, you can return to the Emulation Station menu by holding down Start and Select at the same time on your controller. If you don't know, or you've forgotten, be warned, old games are a lot more difficult. Like this video and subscribe if you'd like me to make more retro gaming videos.